What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So I'm a board certified psychiatrist who makes mental health content here on YouTube, as well as several other social media platforms. And if you are new to the channel, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe because it helps me to know that the material we're creating here is helpful to you out there and is of value. With that said, I know I'm late this week and I should have got this video out Monday, but the lucky for you guys, lucky for you guys, we are going to have two videos this week. So I'm going to start with the first one here, and that's going to be to ask a very important question. And that question is, can we treat schizophrenia without directly blocking dopamine receptors? This is an interesting question, a difficult one to answer. But I think I can give you guys an alternative hypothesis to the dopamine hypothesis here. And it will build on our previous videos and discussions where we looked at the dopamine hypothesis as well as the glutamate hypothesis. So let's crack into the next version here and see if we can treat schizophrenia without blocking dopamine directly. So we're asking a basic question here, and that is, can we treat schizophrenia without directly blocking dopamine? Until this point, psychiatry has focused primarily on a dopamine blocking hypothesis for schizophrenia. And the idea being that excess dopamine transmission at D2 receptors in the mesolimbic pathway explains the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So excessive or hyperactive dopamine transmission at D2 dopamine receptors, specifically in the mesolimbic pathway, causes these positive symptoms. And positive symptoms of schizophrenia would be things such as delusions or hallucinations. Now, in a previous video, we covered the glutamate hypothesis, but the question I have for you guys here is, what about serotonin? How does serotonin play a role in psychosis? And we actually do know that serotonin plays an important role in psychosis, and that's what we're here to kind of briefly discuss. So is it possible that psychosis is the result of hyperactivation of 5-HT, so serotonin 2A receptors, on glutamate neurons. This hyperactivation can be due to excess serotonin. It could also be due to upregulated 5-HT2A receptors and even psychedelic or hallucinogenic drugs that target the 5-HT2A receptor as an agonist or a stimulator of those receptors. All of this can lead to downstream release of glutamate. So excessive serotonin, specifically at the 5-HT2A receptors, or possibly hyperactivity or upregulation of 5-HT2A receptors, or even things like the psychedelic drugs that target 5-HT2A receptors all lead to this excess glutamate release. Now glutamate release in the ventral tegmental area can actually activate the mesolimbic pathway. So if we get excess glutamate release in the ventral tegmental area, it can activate the mesolimbic pathway, resulting in excess dopamine in the ventral striatum. So of course, what we're seeing here is all roads eventually lead back to dopamine. But the important point that I want to make is that this is an upper level or an upstream effect similar to glutamate when we're thinking about how psychosis possibly develops. And we can point to a medication that's been approved for a while now, but it does not block dopamine receptors at all, yet it treats psychosis in a very specific disorder and is being looked at in other disorders. And that medication is called pimavanserin. So pimavanserin is a 5-HT2A or slash 5-HT2C antagonist inverse agonist. So that's a little complicated, but the bottom line is it has a lot of 5-HT2A antagonism or blockade, and it's used to treat Parkinson's disease psychosis. It's also being explored in other areas such as dementia-related psychosis, as well as an augmentation strategy for schizophrenia. So now we have three different ways to think about the symptoms of psychosis and schizophrenia development. We have a dopamine hypothesis, which is the oldest and, and most well-studied. We have a glutamate hypothesis, that's very interesting and also being well studied at this point. And we also have a serotonin hypothesis involving 5-HT2A receptors. 